welcome to Juana's Jardin. My name is Fatima Colindres and I am a park ranger with the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. I am a community outreach ranger, which means I have the important job to bring the parks to the people and the people to their parks. I collaborate with leaders from Bay Area community-based organizations who help me bring non-traditional park users to their national parks. In the following videos, I will be sharing the story of Juana Briones, medicinal uses of plants native to the Presidio, and how to make corn tortillas in your very own home. Now, you may be asking yourself, why is Ranger Fatima dressed in this outfit? Well, I am remembering a special lady. Her name is Juana Briones, and she lived right here in the Presidio, just like I do. But she lived in the time of the Spanish, the Mexican, and the early American period. Her name was Juana Briones, and she was a local curandera or healer or medicine woman. And she used the plants that grow here in this park um, as medicine. Now, we are in a national park, and that means that we cannot cut any of the plants that grow here in your national park. Now, these plants that you see in my little bouquet, these are plants that were um, grown at the plant nursery here in the Presidio, and they grow them in potted plants. And they let me use them for demonstration purposes like I'm doing here today with you. Okay, so if you want to grow your own plants, please do so. They are easy to grow because they're California natives, which means that they have been grown in here for thousands and thousands of years and you don't need to do very much to um, have a beautiful native plant garden in your home if you have the space for it so what do I have for you today well as you can see I have my favorite teacup because we are gonna make some tea today and what are we using for tea we're gonna use these little um, leaflets from one of my favorite plants which is the yarrow plant it's right here. This is the yarrow plant. It has beautiful white flowers. Yarrow comes in different um, color flowers, but the one that grows here in our park is um, the um, white flower version of uh, yarrow. Uh, yarrow is very medicinal in that you can use the leaves if you have an aching tooth and you can't get to the dentist, um, but you wanna numb the pain, you take these, these leaves and you crush them. You can do it with your hand, or you can do it with a rolling pin. I'm doing it with my hand. And you just put that in your mouth, in your aching tooth, and it'll numb the pain, and it will stop the bleeding. All right, but today, we're gonna use these yarrow uh, leaflets to make tea. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my yarrow. I already preheated my water in my tea kettle. And um, I have a little bit, uh, I have a little cup right here. Now, what I usually do for your purpose, I'm going to um, just put them in the tea cup so you can see the process. You can um, actually put them in a coffee filter, okay? Wrap them up in a coffee filter and that will prevent uh, your, your leaves from going all over the place. So what I usually do is I'll take these leaves put them all like this, get a rubber band or a string and um, put it directly into my tea kettle and just let it seep in there. But for today's purposes, I won't do that because I'm only making one cup just to show you how it's done. I'll just leave it in the, in the coffee filter and, um, and then just pour some hot water over it and we're gonna leave it just sitting in there for a few minutes. Now, while we're waiting for our tea to um, get nice and, and stronger, or strong, I'm gonna also show you another plant that grows here in our park. Now, this is this plant right here. Now, this is the strawberries that I planted in my garden. I'm gonna pick one for the use that I have uh, in my kitchen later on. And what I'm going to be doing with this plant is I'm going to be using it as a natural scrub to remove any dry skin, um, especially right now, you know, we've been staying in place in our homes and we've been washing our hands a lot and we've been um, uh, noticing that our skin is dry. And so we have a lot of dry skin. So this is a natural scrub and Juana Briones and the people that lived in this place before the Spanish um, would have used this plant not only for food to eat it but also all the little seeds help you as a natural scrub 
So you just take these old strawberries that you might have in your strawberry baskets that you buy at the store and just take those old ones instead of throwing them away, use them as a natural exfoliant, a natural scrub. Um, this is how Juana Briones and maybe um, some of the Olone people of this area would have used this plant for a natural scrub. Really. So there you are everybody. Natural scrub with the strawberries and our yarrow tea. So I'm gonna take this yarrow um, out of the water here. And so remember when we first started, we had our, le our yarrow leaves, we washed them, and then we put them in a coffee filter. Here they are. There's our original leaves, okay? And uh, as you can see, a little tiny leaflet escaped, but our tea is ready. You'll know it's ready when your water is a little yellow like this. Now, yarrow tea is good for stomach aches. Um, they say that, you know, because it has the... Um, that uh, quality of being able to stop the bleeding. If you suffer from um, ailments in your stomach that could be bleeding in some kind of way, maybe ulcers, they say that this was a medicine that would have been used for ulcers in the time of Juana Briones. But I have used it uh, as a medicine and it is a little bit bitter. So if you don't like bitter tea, mm -hmm, very bitter, yep. Uh, maybe you don't sleep it as long as I did. As you saw, it was just during the time that I was showing you how to do a scrub that this tea took effect. And it's easy as one, two, three, just heating up your water, uh, cutting your little leaflets, and just putting them in the coffee filter into your water and you have your yarrow tea. All right, so that's how it is. That's how you can make some yarrow tea. Um, but if you don't want to make some tea and all you need is a Band-Aid because you ran out, well, you take those leaves, just like I told you with the toothache, and uh, crush them and put them on that cut, and it'll stop the bleeding as well. Here is our little yarrow. And then we also have one more plant that I almost forgot. This is our sticky monkey flower. Our sticky monkey, just like the yarrow, can be used as a natural band-aid as well. These are some of my plants that I love to talk about here in your national park, the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. I hope to see you in your national park. But remember, when you are in your national park, if you see these plants, please don't cut them. Um, they are indigenous to this area and they are protected because they are growing in your national park. So remember, have fun, be safe, and keep your hands clean, maybe with some ceanothus. I will also demonstrate how you can use this plant right here, which is the California lilac, or the scientific name for this plant is ceanothus, or how I remember it is, see, I know this, ceanothus. As you all know, since you're staying at home just like I am, you always have to wash your hands right now. This, the ceanothus plant has lived here for thousands and thousands of years, and if you need soap, all you have to do during this time of the year in the spring is take a few of the blossoms. I always start cooking by washing my hands. Wet your hands. And then, look at this. You have natural soap from this plant. The Ceanothus plant, okay? Or the California lilac. It has beautiful blossoms, as you can see nice blue blossoms um, sometimes it looks like a bush sometimes it looks like a tree but this is the natural soap that has been used by people in this area for thousands and thousands of years juana may have used this plant as i am using it today because juana um, knew or learned how to use these plants by the people that already lived here for many many years before spanish people arrived to this area the olona people and today i'm using it as well to start my cooking demonstration on how to make your own tortillas. I want to share with you how to make tortillas from scratch using maseca, which is um, something you can buy in your local grocery store, either a Mexican store or the local Safeway if you live in a neighborhood where there's a lot of Latinx people like myself. All right, so I'm using maseca, which is um, corn flour, and I'm just putting in some corn flour here uh, you can use the measurements. It tells you how to do it on the package. I just kind of go by my own um, way now since I've been doing this for a little while. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add some cold water. All right. So this is kind of how it looks. All right. 
and then I'm gonna mix it. If you like to wear rings as I do, make sure you take off your rings when you're making the tortillas because you don't wanna get your rings all full of corn dough. All right, the other thing that I already have pre-going is my comal, or you call it a griddle. I have it on and it's nice and hot because as soon as I get these tortillas uh, made, I added a little bit more um, cold water to my mix. Once uh, we get these tortillas going, we just want to throw them onto the comal and uh, cook them. All right. So, I'm mixing the dough. Now, if you were in Juana's time, uh, the Spanish-Mexican period, then you would have been uh, doing a little more work than I'm doing today. You actually would have had to grow your own corn. And here in the Presidio, corn didn't grow very well because the Presidio has very sandy soil. So the corn would have been grown somewhere else and transported to San Francisco. After you had your corn, you would have to grind your corn on a metate, a grinding stone. And then after you ground your corn, you would get masa. This is what masa is, or corn dough in Spanish is masa. And then once uh, you uh, have a little ball, I'll start off how my mom taught me when I was very young. You start off with a ball, kind of like you do with Play-Doh. Now you have your little ball, and then you start using the palms of your hands to turn and press turn and press and so once you get the hang of it you can go a little faster and then you start using your fingers to turn and press the dough so that you're making like a little pancake shape um, tortilla okay and uh, once you have it nice and round and evenly flattened I mean mine doesn't look all that great right now but maybe yours will look much beautiful much better you can put it on your comal oh and if it tears up but like mine just did just start over it's okay and reshape it turn and press turn and press turn and press fix any cracks and put it to cook okay and you do the same with the rest of the dough until you are done when your tortilla has been cooking for a little bit it's going to look like this and once it's looking like this you can flip it over and cook the other side the other ones are not ready yet But as you can see, all you need is a little bit of corn, flour, some water, cold water is best. And then uh, you can make your own fresh tortillas at home, just like Juana Briones did so long ago. Now Juana, because she uh, had her farm and her farm workers, she not only had to make tortillas for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for herself and her family, but she also had to make them for all those workers that she had in uh, her ranch. All right, so everybody, here's our first tortilla of today. Thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen. I hope you your tortillas turn out as nice as mine. Delicious. <laughs>